All right, so first this piece, the guide, the bush, the gear, I'm putting some grease on the inside of that, on the outside where it runs in the bush, and usually just a very brief wipe on that front surface there, where it, the cover holds that in position. Now that's sitting on the shaft, pull that back out where I can get at it, of course it's now it's not sitting on the shaft. Just check that that's in place. That's good now. Where's the cover? Here are two little chrome screws that hold this in place. They're difficult to get at when the camera is fully assembled. If somebody's had cause to get at them for some reason, often they've made a mess of them with a screwdriver. One of the screws you can see quite easily from the top of the camera, it's this one. The other one you can't really see at all. So if one of the screws is damaged, make sure it's the one down here that no one's ever going to see. They're chrome plated brass screws, so they're quite easily damaged. Right. Well, I've seen mechanisms that slide smoother than that, but I think that'll do. The front door. Now, I was looking at this, and this is somewhat distorted. Um, the arms are at a funny angle. And this piece here is distorted, it's pushed in. Now this is quite a thin casting, it's um, pretty fragile. I'm not enthusiastic to spend too much time trying to straighten that if that's damaged, but we have to find out how it goes. So we'll see if we can fit the front door and see if it works. Um, I really don't know what's happened to that. I sus Unless someone tried to pull the door out, didn't know how the door came out. That's a possibility. Anything's a possibility with this particular camera. That certain arm is certainly sitting at a funny angle. got a real twist to it I think. The screw's loose there. Yeah, it's had an awful lot of abuse because the screws are damaged and loose in the body. Let's see how it goes. If it works, it's going to be good. It's going to be good enough. If it doesn't work, I'm in trouble. So I'll find the screws. And almost certainly there were washers under there. Now that one looks a bit thick for my liking. That one's fairly thin. Let's see what happens. I'm looking at the clearances. Normally if you're going to have the thicker washer normally goes at the top. This is taking up the clearance between the body and the door so that it doesn't rattle, so that there's no upwards and downwards rattle. That's what the washers are there to do. In an ideal world you probably wouldn't need them. Or in an ideal world you'd have identical ones top and bottom because that was exactly the right amount. Uh, yeah, I really don't like the way this door feels. It's like it's got a twist to it.
it might just be the arms if we're very lucky and I can replace them. All right, with the doors on, let's see if it closes. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. Doesn't even think about closing. All right. I'm going to have to have that door off and replace the arms on it and hope that it'll work then. Otherwise, the door itself is distorted out of shape and um, my chances of getting it back into shape if that's the case without something breaking are slim. Right, these are washers and screws. Let's get these arms off the door. They don't look, these arms don't look mutilated as though someone has been in there twisting at them with a pair of pliers or poking at them with a screwdriver like some I've seen recently look that that door on the flat bench top it's got this much twist to it I really don't like my chances of getting that straight. Well that might explain the paint loss. This is probably somewhat stressed in a different shape than what it once was. Well I'm not sure that straightening the arms is going to fix this problem. That just doesn't fit. I'll close the front of the camera and see if this thing fits the hole. No, it doesn't. Look at the state of that. Look at that gap. Sitting back on the casting at this end and at that corner, we've got a gap here of between three and four millimetres. <laughs> these things are quite stiff um, and they're probably also quite brittle I don't like my chances of getting that straightened up I'll think about that for a minute it's um going to prove a bother and a nuisance. We'll carry on and get the film advance mechanism done. So we'll get some pieces together here. We've already got the uh, locked lever and release lever in place. So we'll just need our shaft here for the film advance. Three screws that hold it to the base. The bush for the film advance the film take up sprocket spool which goes like that and that can go on the body so I've got to lubricate this piece now this bush screws into the body and the shaft rotates around it and it has its return spring I need to lubricate the shaft here where it runs through this bush and typically I use graphite grease for that because I like the way that feels and uh, this stuff has got a certain amount of tack to it, it stays where it's put. And I normally put this on the spring as well. So that the coils of the spring don't bind up. 
not that they're particularly prone to, I have to say. It's not really a, that's not a, a thing. The cam surface. Got two cams here, or two little ratchets. Now normally I lubricate those with synthetic grease. Now the purpose of those ratchets is to ensure that the film advance lever will only move in one direction on the cocking stroke. It won't return to the rest position until you reach the end of the action. Let's open the back of the camera. Put the film spool in place. Just check the position of the lock lever. I'll swing that up out of the way. The release lever I want pulled back into position like that and drop my advance shaft in place and that should sit right there. It's not going in so something's holding me up. I'd say that the spring on the side of the advanced shaft is not sitting in its slot so that the bush won't go down over it. Let's have a look see if that's the case. Most definitely. That spring's not sitting correctly, why not? No, it's still not popping into place. Let's just do it. Yes, it's sitting correctly now. Three screws, nickel plated. These ones are quite clean, but if you haven't run your screws through an ultrasonic cleaner, the ones from the, the cover on the cover plate will still have adhesive on them. They'll be obvious. These ones will be clean because they didn't. Get three screws in position, then tighten them up. Yes, my film spool sitting correctly. That part's good. I need to put the clutch in at the top. Now the clutch consists of three pieces. We've got the outer part of the clutch, the inner part of the clutch, and the spring that provides the, the controlled slippage between them. These components, I, I like to lubricate this with graphite grease. Um, you can use anything else you happen to have. I just particularly like the feel of this stuff for this job. Now I've got to assemble this. Of course this spring pushes outwards. So it has to be compressed in order to be able to get this through. It hooks into a little notch in the centre of the middle part. We're going to be able to compress this and get the lot into there. So lining up the little tab with the notch on the centre. Hook my crimp pliers over that. Holding this lightly, I'll revolve that round pulling the spring into place as I go and drop the outer over it and there's the clutch assembled it has controlled slippage it's always smoother in one direction than the other and the direction that it's smoother in by happy coincidence or by design is the direction it needs to slip in so that's good so I'll put that in position 
that will engage with the slots in the top of the film take up spool like that and I'll need the guide bush the guide bush has a gear on the top of it of course all of everything here has been through the cleaner so it has no lubricant in there anymore I'll just force a bit of grease in there to make sure that's lubricated quick wipe around the center where it runs on the shaft and drop that into position if I revolve my the spool which revolves the gear that will engage with this gear which allows everything to drop into place and this piece is held in with a screw that forms the guide post for the cocking rack and this side and on the other side is a little ratchet which ensures that the film advance gear can only rotate in one direction so I'll get its bush in place get the little ratchet pull in place I'll put a tiny smear of grease on the top of that where the pull runs and of course there's a spring that goes on there to push the pull over in contact with the gear We'll just do those screws up lightly because I might come back and revisit those. And put the spring in place on that pole. That's good. And then I'll fit the gear. So normally I give that a little wipe of grease on the inside. I don't need to be as generous as that. And rotating this anti-clockwise pushes the pawl out of the way and allows me to drop this gear in. The rest of the components is a spring that sits here. Usually I give that a little wipe of grease, not because it needs to be lubricated, but because it's spring steel, very prone to corrosion, and a little bit of grease helps protect it against that. A little drive dog here. A washer, the gear on the top of the film advance shaft that couples to the cocking rack. It's always worth looking closely at that gear in case it's been damaged at some stage um, along with damage to the cocking rack and the cocking rack had been replaced but the gear had not. If you have one bad tooth as long as it's right over here to the right hand side it won't come in contact with the rack in normal action so you can get away with a bad tooth on the gear as long as it's just the one now something just popped out of place there I felt that yes so basically what happened there was that the film advance shaft dropped down and so my careful construction at the top here getting that correctly positioned on the square it was had gone that's good now I've just put something underneath it to support the shaft I'll do my the screw up that's good 
the shaft bear is done. At the base of the camera, I need to put the latch lever in for the rewind button. So for that we have the latch lever itself, the washer, the rewind button, that shouldered screw, and here we have two springs. The spring for the rewind button and the spring for the lever. That is the shaft for the sprocket shaft. There. Right, let's get this lever done first. Now the toe of this lever, I put a smear of molybdenum paste on there because that's where it comes in contact with the film advance shaft, film advance um, mechanism, and that's quite a high friction area. So I'll get that lever in position. Put it spring loosely in position. Get the shoulder screw in position. Now here we have to make sure that the screw runs right through and is not trapping either the spring or the lever, that they're both free to rotate around it. That's good. And now I've got to swing the tail of that spring across over the top of the lever. Let's find a stiffer pair of tweezers. Like that. That went um, suspiciously smoothly. So the sprockets, the film sprocket and the shaft that runs through it, the sprocket, the slotted part goes up to the top. Put that in the back of the camera. The shaft, I'm lubricating at the bottom end with a bit of synthetic grease. At the top end with a bit of synthetic grease where it runs through the body casting. I'll put a few, a little bit on the teeth at the top where it engages with the gear. With a bit of luck that'll wriggle down into place. Might have to pull it into line at the bottom. That's it. I pull back that lever, it'll come all the way through. That's great. Now if I revolve my spool, it'll revolve the sprocket shaft around until I can see the hole there for the screw that uh, drives the sprocket. And the screw is the same in this case as was used for the hinge pins on the front door. And usually this goes in without any fuss, but sometimes there seems to be a bit of a fight with it. See if I can make sure that hole's lined up. It is. That's it. Started and running. That's great. So the rewind button. I lubricate the spring with some synthetic grease. Put the rewind button through the spring. Put the washer in place. And this screws to the end of the sprocket shaft at the base here. And the only trick is getting the washer centered so that the rewind button will actually press in. That's good. I'll just not tighten that up. 
So that's our film advance components in place. At the base of the camera now I'm going to close this up so I want my advance lever. And the advance lever here, the rubber pad is perished so I'm going to replace that. So I'll clean that up and then find a new piece of rubber to go in there and then carry on. Alright let's move on here. So first thing I want to do here is just swing the lock lever out of the way. And rotate the advance shaft one full turn to pre-tension the advance shaft so that the so that the advance lever will return to the rest position properly. That's good. So that's pre-tensioned one full turn. Now it's only been held in place by the lock lever, so I've got to be careful not to disturb that until I've got the film advance lever in position. So I've got three screws that hold this plate in place. Nickel plated screws, same as was used for the film advance shaft. These screws will typically still have traces of adhesive and that screw doesn't want to go in there for some reason. It could be a damaged thread in the slot, could be a damaged thread in the screw. We'll try it in another position. That's the screw because it's reluctant there too, but it's not so reluctant that it won't go. I would say at a guess that that screw has, uh, the thread was malformed in some fashion. It's all three screws down nice and tight. Put the film advance lever in place. This is held in with three screws. And because I'm just in the early in the assembly process, I only need to hold this in with two screws basically at the moment to keep it in position. It's going to have to come off anyway in order to put the leatherette on the base of the camera. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing about that yet. I'm going to cut a piece of leather to do that job. Anyway, so there we have it. The film advance levers in place. Moves forward correctly. That all looks very good. At the top of the camera. Next thing I really need to worry about here is the cocking rack. Now the cocking rack, there's not many variables here. That'll drop in there and couple to that gear. And I'm just looking to see if there's any excess play between the cocking rack and the post at this point. And it look, actually it looks pretty good, so I'm going to tighten those two screws up or check that they're tight. That's, that looks quite good. Now I've got two teeth engaged here, that's probably correct. And certainly the rack will advance nicely in that position. That'll do. So that's held down. Let's, oh, let's lubricate the rack first now. Now I've decided that's all looking good. We'll lubricate that. So a bit of synthetic grease on the rack. The rack looks a little bit used. Um, teeth appear to be in great condition. Certainly don't expect any problems with that. So we can move that to the next position just to get an extra tooth engaged at the start. See if that will work for us. No, that's right up against the body at that point. We'll come back a tooth. And 
we are, we're exactly where we started off. Shouldn't be second guessing myself. The plate that holds this down in place. There are two screws. Well, there's one, one screw and one post in this case. Get the screw in place and the post. Find the right tool for the post. The post is the guide post for the film release button. That moves nice and smoothly. And I can put the plate on the top here. We can get one screw in at this point. One other screw holds the... What are we working with here? 3C? Or 2C? 3C. One other screw holds the meter in place. But we can put it temporarily in place. And check the action. A bit of reluctance to come back to the rest position here suggests there should be a shim under here. Let's loosen that screw off slightly and see if it yeah it certainly wants a shim washer under there at that point that's not uncommon um, sometimes there are shim washers sometimes there are not and i think that looking at these washers there's i've got three washers in front of me that came with the camera the thinner of the three will probably go in here Do that up tight and check the action again. Sometimes you might need one over here as well to match it. Now that's um, nice and smooth. No problem there. So that's all good. Our film advance mechanism is all in place. I suppose I could just about put the shutter on the front of that and see what happens.